when my mother left, and you know, again, this is something that a lot of you probably relate to, but you know, there's a lot of things to take care of, disseminate, give away, a lot of things of value, some of none except uh, in the form of nostalgia or remembrance. And my sister was handing off some things to me, one of my sisters. And amongst these were these little crocheted doilies. And they were green, a lot of green leaf and red roses. And you know, sweet, maybe kind of dated, I suppose. But these doilies, me and two of my sisters, two of the five children, three of us, had given to my mother on a birthday way back when. And so here was yet another thing and another tug. And, and I just thought, what am I going to do? And so I th uh, the idea came, I'm going to ask, I'm going to give these to June. And, uh, and then another part of me thought, no, no, June may not like them. And if she throws them away, I'm going to have a problem with this. <laughs> I could see that in myself. There was this little bit of attachment, you know. So I thought, I can't do it. I can't do it. And then I thought, OK, I will take them up to the thrift store at Ananda Village. And surely out of that community, someone will you know, like these. But at least I won't have to look at what happened to them. I can give them to a great cause, give them perhaps to a guru by unknowingly. But you know, I can let, maybe let go of that little bit of attachment. So I sent them up. And a few weeks went by, a few months went by, I suppose. A few months went by. And I was over at June's house. <laughs> I was sitting there on the couch. And opposite me was this little table and this little altar. And lo and behold, <laughs> those doilies are sitting there, those crocheted doilies. And I thought, no, nah, that can't be. <laughs> So I said, <laughs> I said, June, where did you get those? They look so sweet there. And she just said, well, you know, whenever I go up to the village, I go by the thrift store. And there's always something there that speaks to me. And I saw these doilies, and I thought, I am going to get these and put these on my altar. So here I was, you know, I just thought, oh my, Divine Mother, this is really something. But I didn't say anything because I, you know, again, I didn't want her to be obligated to something that was, you know, had this great story, you know, of history behind it. But there it was, you know, Divine Mother just figured it all out. And I have to say, you know, when you feel that connection inwardly, there's just nothing else going on. There's nothing else. There's no time. There's no space. There's no matter. It's just that perfect communion with God as our beloved Divine Mother. And that's one of the aspects of Divine Mother. That's, it's, it's why it's so relevant in our times, because Divine Mother can do everything, can do anything, and will wait, and will be compassionate, and will be loving, and will see what we don't see, will hear what we don't hear, will be sensitive to what we don't feel, because she's the mother of each one of us, and knows us that well, knows us that intimately.